Hey guys, welcome to Coding After 30. I hope you guys are doing great. Thank God for this hat because my hair is getting out of control. In today's video, I'm going to tell you guys how you should be learning to code, especially if you're older or you're looking to start a second career in web development. This is very important video for you guys because I've made this mistake so many times and I am I just don't want you guys to make the same mistake. Here's the thing, the most valuable resource you don't have at the time is the time. Unfortunately, as you get older, with the responsibilities of having a family, having kids, having a full-time job, wherever that position is for you, you don't have time. And so how do you make it work with the time that you don't have? So you have to create and steal time from yourself. If it's cutting into sleep, if it's cutting into other things that you like to do, like Netflix and everything else, that you'd like to do the point is you have to make sure that you find the time to study it is super important and very necessary and I know that you might be thinking yeah you're so obvious of course I would have to sacrifice things and create time but here's the thing that you might not think about is are you studying the right things that you should be doing and how do you know what those right things to study are are you watching videos by some dude like me on YouTube who's telling you what you should do because because the fact of the matter, we might have all the best intentions and we might be giving you the best information that we have available to us. It might not be the correct information in your case. Here's what you should think about. Do you know the goal that you're trying to achieve? Saying that I want to get a job as a web developer is not enough because it is very vague. It's not concrete. Like, I don't even know what that means. How do you know when you're ready? So when you start to think about switching career before learning to code, before jumping in and starting to try to build your first website, you have to think about some of the things and answer some of these questions. Number one, the type of job that you want. Do you know what is the bare minimum requirement of knowledge that you have to acquire? in order to get the job? Is it a certification? Is it having a college degree? Is it having that boot camp? Do you even know? The truth is, a lot of us don't. And that's the mistake I made. I did not know what the bare minimum requirements were to get a job. I was just guessing. And so I was learning everything under the sun thinking that's what I needed. Number two, do you know what jobs are available in your area? You might be learning a technology that unfortunately doesn't have as many opportunities job-wise in your area. I know a while ago I did Ruby and Ruby on Rails and back then it was super popular but nowadays if you try to get a job as a Ruby developer it really depends on where you live and there are certain areas that is going to be really tough. Maybe Boston will be you know pretty easy, maybe New York and stuff like that but then some smaller cities like where I grew up in Connecticut there was nothing around there and it would be very difficult to get the job that I want so actually knowing what the demand is in your area and understanding it is very important what I would say if you're just starting out I would search companies in your area and see what kind of position entry-level positions that they're hiring for what are the most common technologies used I mean I moved from Connecticut to Texas because I studied react and JavaScript and I I knew that Texas has a lot of positions for React developers and to increase my chances of getting a job I literally move to a different place and that's just I'm not telling you this to be like hey you have to move I'm just telling you, you have to understand your market and the need in the market for the jobs that are available and sometimes if you're in a small city which might not have enough jobs to begin with you might have to consider moving like I did so knowing the requirements and knowing jobs available is super important the third thing I would say is that it's very hard to get a job with your resume by itself meaning if I have a resume oh I'm self-taught developer I never went to college and you don't even have a portfolio and you send it out to a hundred companies who's also getting a lot of resumes from college graduates who graduate with computer science who guess what just based on the fact that they're getting so many uh, resumes they're not even gonna look at yours they're not even going to consider it at all just because they're going to fill it out. It's like, oh, yeah, he, this guy. And that's the truth. You know what I mean? That's the truth. If I sent out my resume the way I did, I would have gotten zero calls. So how did I get a job? And what you should be doing is you should be getting out there and making yourself marketable. You should be going to meetups, meeting people, learning from those meetups, building connections. And eventually you're going to get to a situation where somebody's going to be like, hey, I just heard this great opportunity at this company I work for. Let me put in a good word for you. And 
lot of times that referral, it doesn't guarantee you a job, but it will get your foot in the door to an interview where you could demonstrate the skills that you guys know. So the reason why I want to tell you all this is to make sure that you guys are setting realistic expectations and you understand that it is not as easy as some of these YouTubers. <laughs> like, I'm not a YouTuber. I got not enough subscribers to call myself that. So I, I you know, I don't count for this. Uh, general blank blanket statement no i'm just kidding a anybody who gives you an advice is sometimes they want to win your heart they want to you know make you feel good so they'll tell you some things like or they will not tell you how difficult things are just because they want to keep you motivated but the truth is it's very hard it's very disheartening sometimes and in terms of like switching career especially in going to coding and programming there's so much studying that you have to do especially being older with all the responsibilities you have it's not going to be easy you're going to have to make the sacrifice somewhere you know if it's waking up early going to bed late so you could get that extra hour of studying so it's not impossible it's definitely doable what kept me going is like a lot of people like like I'm 40 I'm turning 40 in July 1st I'm 39 right now and this idea for coding after 30 started like when I was 35 and I just recently decided you know what I'm gonna really put some effort into this because I want to make sure I give you guys some advice of mistakes that I made so hopefully you don't make those mistakes but the point is it took me a long time to get the job but the reason I never gave up is because everybody's like well you're 38 you're 36 you're 35 and I would always come back with a thing yeah I'm 35 if I get a job now at 35 I have another 30 years of working experience left most people retire at 65 if they ever retire and you know now I'm 40 and just, just got a job from months ago and it's like yeah I still have 25 years of working experience left like I could work for another 25 years that's like a lot you know what I mean especially if it's at a job that is going to pay you after three, four, five years of very high income. Why not? It's amazing. And so if I didn't get my job now and I started working at 45, 45 would be like, yeah, I got 20 more years left of work. And the point is, yes, you're switching careers. You're starting something new. It's going to be hard. But just the fact that it's hard to make the change doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. That's the whole point. So I just wanted to make this quick video, tell you about that. It's not just about coding. It's about learning the right things. It is knowing what the demand is in your area. You know, you probably got scared. You're like, probably like, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm just going to give you luck. If you're starting learning basic programming, whatever it is, and you're just starting out, it's okay. It's not really going to hurt you. But I'm saying if you're for two, three years been kind of jumping from language to language, trying to jump on all these different fads and programming, if you don't have a clear goal, then yeah, you're wasting your time. I wasted at least three years of doing that and it's until I got really focused with what I wanted to do that I was able to make progress and I had a very clear goal my goal was number one is get any job at coding and I started doing WordPress sites for people because I thought it was the easiest thing I could ask my neighbor if they need a you know WordPress website and eventually I got a freelancing job doing that and I did that for a while and when I first got that job it wasn't a job it was a unpaid internship it was insane I would just show up and work for free but that's sometimes what you guys have to do but it's not until I started being very specific my friend who's been a developer forever he's like look the easiest thing for you to do right now because it's such a high in demand skill is to become very good at JavaScript and learn react he's like I don't want you to do any WordPress stuff I don't want you to do any of that PHP stuff if you're really serious about getting a job this is what you have to do number one you have to move to Texas because that's where the opportunity is he was right in that sense because where I live it would have been really difficult for me to get a job number two he's like all you need to do is study javascript and react period do not try to learn any other things just learn to become a very good front-end developer with react and get your foot in the door and that's what i did and that's how i got in to my first job alluding back to this idea of making connections i got that job because i got a referral from somebody who worked there so even though i could i could tell you 100 percent that my resume alone would not put me into that interview it was because somebody had my resume and said yeah i think paul is a good guy i think you'll really like him let him come to the interview and give you a chance and then of course the interview i had to sell myself and kind of demonstrate that i knew enough to get hired and here i am got the job so pretty long video 10 minutes not that that much longer than all my other ones but I hope you found some value in it and if you're still not sure what the whole point of this video is is that when you're switching careers when you're older you have everything against you time against you your responsibilities against you 
it's not gonna be easy so if you don't take that kind of that embracing the suck dealing with not like just bad moods all the time and not pushing through it's gonna be very hard to succeed because there's probably even to today there's seven bad days that i have in terms of studying and three good ones i mean it's getting better now but the point is you have to put in your work you have to put in your time you have to put in your struggle and i will tell you that eventually things will get easier it took me two and a half years just to make sense of like simple programming concepts that now i'm like oh i get it and it's not even a problem for me so with that being said don't give up keep striving forward keep moving forward if you have any questions let me know in the comments below i'd love to answer one of the craziest things happened to me which i never never even thought about doing so somebody reached out to me on youtube and asked for a personal coaching because they're like hey you know more than i do and i'm kind of in the same situation and i don't want to make the same mistakes i did so i'm not saying that i'm going to coach everybody but that's something i'm considering and thinking so if you want to help me practice let me know in the comments the questions you have and i might start taking a few students to coach i figured for the first 10 students i'm just gonna do it as uh for free just give them my time because i feel that if i could help somebody else to achieve the goal that they have i'm gonna do it plus it's gonna make me better at coaching and help me build that experience and helping others so if you're interested i'll leave my email in the description send me an email and maybe we could work together and again right now i'm just starting out i don't really care if you subscribe to anything like i just want to make sure that i get my message out there and have some of you guys benefit from the stuff i say so anyway thanks for watching love you i'll talk to you guys later